Okay, so in the next couple of minutes, um, I'd like to talk uh, with you about what a database is. Now that we have um, discussed a little bit uh, what the limitations of Excel might be, it's a good idea to talk about what is a database and what features does it bring to the table that we can use to improve our information management um, endeavors. So a database um, is often um, not, or when we talk about databases, we often mean more than one thing. So we, we uh, wh when you say, okay, we, we, we talk about a database, we often mean what usually is called a database system. So this is um, all the blocks that you see here make up what we call a database system. And it has different components. Typically, um, when we look at a database, all these components are um, there and um, we will now explore what these different components is and how they play together and interact to create what we call a database system or often referred to as a database. And the database itself is, is, is actually just the part in the middle. So um, it's depicted here by this um, symbol. Does anyone, by the way, know what the symbol uh, actually stands for or what it is? It's it's the more or less um, standard symbol that we use for databases, but what does it really represent? Does anyone know? It's very interesting. It's, it's a little bit about the history where databases come from. It's it's not a barrel, so it looks a little bit, or it's al also not tires. That um, does anyone know what it is? It's uh yeah, yeah. It's disks. And do you also know what that has to do with data? Yeah, so, so disks by themselves, hard disks by themselves, yeah. Yeah, so, so maybe that's not clear to everyone um, because most laptops today don't have these types of disks anymore. So, but there, there used to be and there still are um, hard disks and they, they um, are made of, of these little disks stacked on top of each other where the little head is, is reading the data. And typically um, that was then used as a symbol for databases because it's, it's simply the what we associate with, um, with data storage, database, and we use this little disk symbol stacked on top of each other. So that's uh, where this symbol is coming from. And what is a database? Um, briefly said, it's a centrally managed data pool um, it's very general um, definition here, and this data pool is made accessible via application independent mechanisms. Um, also very, very broad, but um, it covers the most important things. So centrally managed, um, and that's in contrast to what Excel is usually doing. So Excel is usually not a centrally managed data pool, but it's rather a locally managed data pool on our laptops, unless we publish it somewhere. But the original idea of a spreadsheet is more or less local data. We work with the data, we do something with the data and then share it with a colleague and they can, they can maybe do something with it. And the idea was never to have a centrally managed data pool and you can still see that um, be because it lacks a lot of functionality um, to do a really centrally uh, man central managing of the data. And then the second part is um, the, the accessibility via application independent mechanisms. And that's a little bit technical, but basically it means that a database should be accessible and, and the data within the, the database should be accessible, um, not using a prescribed front end like Excel, so which is a, it's a very um, proprietary um, software from Microsoft in this case. So if I had uh, a totally different ap application and I wanted to use Excel as my database, it would be hard to integrate that with an Excel spreadsheet. So the idea here is that um, it's, it's, it's just about the data and not about what we do with the data. And, and uh, this is basically expressed by the accessibility via application indep independent mechanisms. And one way this is achieved is via SQL. So SQL is, as you might already know from the introduction of this course, um, the standard um, query, uh, structured query language, and it's a standard for querying data in rela relational databases. And that is um, the, the, the implementation of this application independent mechanism to access the data. And once we have an interface that allows us to, to access the data um, independent of, of Excel or any other front end, um, it simply needs to be able to um, um, issue SQL statements and it gets back the results from the database system. And it 
SQL can not only query the data, you can also manip manip manipulate data and create tables, drop tables and stuff like that. So you can do everything that you want um, in terms of managing data with a database with SQL. So databases actually is just the, the, the data pool and on top of that data pool we often have something called views. So you can imagine the data pools, um, the databases, they comprise all the data that we want to manage with a database system. And that can be a lot of, of, of data, a lot of information. And sometimes a certain application or a certain user doesn't need all of the data. It, it, he or she only needs a certain aspect or a certain subset of the data. And for that, we typically create um, so-called views. And those views are basically sit on top of, of the data pools and they provide um, a um, encap encapsulated access to the data which should simplify um, the access to the data and also control the access to the data. So you can have um, views where only certain people can, um, can, can access, which only certain people can access and um, others cannot. And by that you can already constrain um, people from accessing the whole data pool. So this is the, the views and then we have uh, on top of the, the whole um, database pool and the views we have what we call a database, database management system or short DBMS. And if we didn't have that we ha would have no means to access the data because the data management system allows us to use for example SQL to um, access the data in the data pool. So that's basically the interface the, um, that makes it application independent and lets us use SQL. And for example, there's a, there's a user depicted or, or two with a laptop that could use SQL to access the data pool via the database management system. And the database management system, you can imagine, is, is basically um, an administrative front end for developers to, to create tables, um, to, to create views and stuff like that but it also takes requests in, uh, written in SQL from applications, from users. So um, this is basically the, the, the thing that is interacting between the user or the application and the data pool. And it handles all the requests. It makes sure that the requests are um, checked, whether they are uh, correct syntactically, but also if, if the person who is trying to access the data actually is allowed to do so. So all these um, mechanisms that ensure that, that um, the, app, uh, the access of the data is handled correctly are part of the database management system. <coughs> and finally, at the very bottom, I think you cannot see the rest uh, of, of the picture here, but it's, it's, it should slightly um, be visible because I, I removed the opacity a little bit, but I think here on the BIMA it's not visible. But um, the final layer, the very bottom, um, is the so-called physical file organization or the internal view of, of the database. And databases um, don't store uh, data magically somehow. They still use a file system underneath. So when, when you use a database, um, access is, is, is no exception here um, or any other database, somewhere it will store the data in files on a disk, on, on a computer's disk. But how it does um, store the data is an internal um, feature of each database. So you, you, you have different database vendors. For example, um, Microsoft has a, has a SQL Server database, which is a, um, a large player in the market. And you have Oracle as, as one of the leading um, database vendors. You have SAP with HANA. Um, it's a database that is mostly used in their own ERP products, but of course um, can also be used um, by itself and you have many other database vendors so so companies that develop databases and sell them to other companies and each of those databases um, has its own um, way of organizing the files um, on, on so, so, so how to store the data in files but basically they all store them in files because that's the only way how we can actually um, store something on an operating system so that's what the operating system is providing us with whether it's Windows or Linux or, or Mac, um, it's always about the file system and the database, of course, also makes use of that file system. But the important thing is we never, as a user or a developer, never see the file system level. It's, it's we, we don't have to deal with it because it's being encapsulated and hidden from us 
And the only way, uh, the, the only thing that we need to know is how to access the data using SQL. And we need to know, of course, what data is in the database. So we need to know the data model. And if we know this, SQL and the data model, we can access the data, we can change data, we can insert data, um, we can query data. We don't need any knowledge of the physical file um, organization. That's the secret of each database vendor. Of course, it's not a secret, it's documented, but to the user, it's, it's un, uh, irrelevant. It's hidden, it's encapsulated. It might be relevant to database administrators who want to fine tune the performance of a database. They might, at some point, un be need to understand how <coughs> the database physically organizes the data, but we, and most other users or developers will not need to know that. So this is um, the complete picture, um, which, which is, as I said, made up of uh, different parts, and you can distinguish three um, layers in each database. So one is the internal view, which is basically how the files are stored on, on the hard disk, and there you will find folders <laughs> and files and many, many files. But only the database knows how m to make sense of those files. So, so it's not like th there are Excel files that you could open and you see the data. It's more like there are binary files and they only make sense when you know exactly how to put them together. So it's not something that we could, we could access um, on our own without using the database. And then you have the conceptual view, which is basically the data model that we implemented as a data modeler or, or developer, or as we will do in Airtable in, in, in a second or in a couple of minutes. So that's basically the entity relationship model converted into a database model, converted into tables and columns, and that's what we find here. Top of that, we can have views, as I said, that limit the data and that allow us to um, select subsets of the data. And then we have the database management, si management system that allows us to actually access the data using, for example, SQL. And that is the database system. <coughs>